Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to iGAN. Now we are checking out the new MacBook Pros uh, that have been launched with the newer generation of uh, the Apple Silicon, which is the M3, M3 Pro and M3 Max. Now if you're in the market for a new MacBook Pro, or if you already own a MacBook Pro and are considering upgrading, uh, this video will possibly help you figure out whether or not you should be jumping into the M3 line or uh, whether you should wait for the next generation. So let's quickly get into it. Now, as far as design is concerned, now the base model M3 is also available with the same shell of uh, the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So you're getting a 14 inch MacBook Pro with M3, but prices are now up to 1,69,000 rupees for uh, the base model. This base model with the M3 chip is also not available in what I would say is basically the best color of the MacBook Pro, which is the space black color. Now, if you stack all three colors together, you will find that it's not a lot different from the space gray color, but it's slightly darker and it looks slightly better. You also get a black cable inside the box, but the power brick remains white for some reason. There are also a few other differences in terms of uh, the base model M3 versus the Pro and the Max. Uh, on the Pro models as well as the Max models, you get an additional Thunderbolt port and display support options are also different. So while the base model M3 can only support a 6K display at up to 60 Hertz of refresh rate, so that's only one display, maximum 6K resolution. The M3 Pro model can support two 6K displays at up to 60 Hertz and the M3 Max can support four 6K displays at up to 60 Hertz, but you can also get 8K from both the Pro and the Max and you can also get 4K at 240 Hertz on an external display via the HDMI port on both the Pro and the Max model. So those are some basic differences between those models. And of course you do have performance stacking as well. So the M3 chip is the base single chip. The M3 Pro is twice the size and basically two M3 chips together. And the M3 Max is basically two M3 Pro chips together. So you get performance stacking as well. So as you go up the line, and empty your pockets, you get more and more performance. So with the M3, you can get a maximum of an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. With the M3 Pro, you can get up to a 12 core CPU and an 18 core GPU. This is one core less than what you could get with the M2 Pro. And with the M3 Max, you can get a whopping 16 core CPU and a massive 40 core GPU. You can also up your RAM to up to 128 gigabyte which is then shared between the CPU and the GPU, which means that if you're doing more graphic intensive tasks, you wanna pick the RAM from the get-go so that you get that buffer in your everyday tasks. Now this design of the MacBook Pro came out with the M1 generation, and this Pro model has been really successful for Apple and for everyone who's used it has been really impressed with the overall design. It also has a really useful ports with the HDMI, SD card reader, and the additional Thunderbolt port that you get here. But more importantly, this design is also extremely robust and uh, more reminiscent of good build quality from Apple. You also get a fantastic display on these. It's a little skewed in terms of uh, the aspect ratio, but you get thousand nits of a sustained brightness, whether you get the base model, the pro model, or the max model, you get 1600 nits of peak brightness on all three models as well. And you also get 120 Hertz of refresh rate on all three models as well. So the display is basically the same between the 14 and the 16. There is a resolution difference, but that's only to counter for the size so that they can keep their liquid retina resolution. So you're getting really impressive displays on these machines and they are mini LED displays and they perform extremely well have excellent color accuracy. So if you're getting into video editing work or photo editing work, these displays are really accurate. They have a DCI-P3 coverage of 100%. I mean, they're basically the best displays that you can get for that kind of work. Now, before we get into detailed performance, if you're a student or a business person, MacBook Pros also make sense for that. So if you're getting a base model M3, you have lots of things that are built in. Uh, to the MacBook Pro and this time around they've added some features into the OS as well. So you have something called the presentation mode uh, which is added on for things like video calls. So not only can you blur out your background while you're on a video call, you can also go into this presentation mode which allows you to showcase whatever you want. So you can have an app on the screen and that'll allow you to sort of demonstrate on the app. It looks really cool and you can be in front of the app. It automatically detects the depth. This will be great for video calls, for students to make presentations, uh, for uh, business owners to make presentations as well. I mean, it's a very easy way to demonstrate things and it's now built into the Mac. You also get a high resolution webcam. It's a 1080p webcam, but the colors are really good and uh, the exposure also comes out great. It works well even in low light situations and you have excellent noise isolation as well. They have added a new feature for noise isolation. 
And speaking of noise isolation, the microphones are really impressive on this as well. So this is a sample of the camera and the microphones that are built into the MacBook Pro. The microphones are actually really good in terms of uh, the audio fidelity, but also they're excellent at noise isolation. And over here, I can also turn on certain things so I can improve my lighting by turning on studio lighting. So you can see that it'll give me a little bit of a focus here. And then I can also turn on portrait mode so you can see that everything behind me goes into a, a depth of focus or, or a blur sort of a mode over here. As far as the microphone is concerned, I can switch from a standard microphone, which is this, to a voice isolation microphone, which is now turned on. And you should see a little bit of a difference with that as well. So as you can see, the microphones are great and so is the camera, but also you get a really impressive sound system. So we've seen that MacBooks have had consistently really good speakers. This generation, the speakers are even more tuned. So whether you get the 14 inch or the 16 inch, you're getting impressive sound from these to the point where you won't need external speakers. calls it automatically isolates the speaker so it will not pull back any sound from the speaker into the microphone and you won't get that echo uh, that you do on other laptops. Now with all that out of the way let's talk about performance. Uh, we've already seen that the threshold for 4k video editing, 8k video editing was crossed when Apple released Apple Silicon. With M1 we've already established that 4k video edits have become simple. So whether you've got a base model M1 or a base model M3 the performance uplift for those kind of activities will not be that much because we've already crossed that threshold. So we are not going to see an improvement in terms of being able to play 4K videos or being able to edit 4K videos because previous generation machines could already do that. What you're getting now is improvement in terms of efficiency and what you're getting is improvement in terms of increasing the tasks. So whether you are rendering four streams, now you'll be able to render eight streams. So it improves in terms of stacking. These machines are extremely powerful and if we just look at some benchmarks, you'll see that there is a considerable difference from previous generation machines, but between the M2 and the M3 chips, there is not a lot of difference. So you're only getting a slight improvement from last generation, but a significant improvement from first generation of Apple Silicon as far as benchmarks are concerned. What we've also seen is that uh, render times have reduced. So if you're exporting videos on say uh, video editing software, you'll find that not only are render times faster between last generation's chip and this generation's chip, but they're also more efficient. And that is thanks to the increased number of efficiency cores on the CPU of the M3 chip versus the M2 chips. So we're getting better battery performance from these machines and we are getting less power consumption. And if you're editing videos, uh, while these are faster than last generation, they're also consuming much less power than last generation. What has also been added to the M3 chips is an improved media engine. It also has an AV1 decoder, and you also have hardware accelerated ray tracing all the way from the base model M3 chip to the M3 Max chip. Now this not only allows for very specific lighting situations in games, it overall improves the gaming capability and with the kind of displays that you get with the MacBooks, you'll be able to enjoy this thoroughly. You can also attach an external display and because you can attach a PlayStation or an Xbox controller with the MacBook, you can get that experience of gaming on these machines. And with some new games like Lies of P and some other games now being available and being pushed out to Macs, which means that not only can you use these for performance intensive tasks, but you can also enjoy gaming on the side in your downtime, which is excellent. And while these may not be there as a gaming PC, these are still extremely capable machines with impeccable hardware in there, which will be great for gaming situations as well. Let's quickly talk about battery life. With the 14 inch size, you're getting anywhere from 16 to 18 hours of battery life for everyday use. And with the 16 inch, you're getting anywhere from 20 to 22 hours of battery life, which is kind of ridiculous. With the 16 inch model, you do get a 140 watt charger out of the box, as well as with the 14 inch one, you get a 96 watt charger out of the box. Both these machines will offer impressive battery life and 
One thing that has improved the battery life is the increase in the efficiency cores that I mentioned earlier, but also the fact that these run much cooler than previous generations. So you barely even hear the fans turn on even for high intensity tasks. So even while in certain cases while gaming and in certain cases while exporting videos on Final Cut, the fans don't even spin up because these are that thermally managed and that much more efficient that you don't even need to worry about batteries being drained by fans running at high speed. So overall, these are really capable machines. They are expensive and that's basically the only downside you have with MacBook Pros. And they're now much more acceptable by people and you will see that a lot more people are gravitating towards buying a MacBook because it has become a more reliable and a more complete machine. Now, do you need a MacBook Pro? That's a question that you need to answer because the MacBook Air is also quite capable and you still get those presentation features on MacBook Airs as well. So if you're a student or if you're in a working situation, uh, a MacBook Air will be a pretty impressive machine for you. But will you have hardware accelerated ray tracing? Probably not. Uh, will you have the gaming powers? Probably not. Will you have impressive speakers? and microphones, probably, but not as good as this. So, I mean, if you want that extra performance and want that extra capability and the impressive display, the MacBook Pro basically becomes the option for you. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you're planning on buying a MacBook Pro, let us know what your preferred specifications would be in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.